Hi there, welcome to another evening sketch along session. I'm going to put, put a reference picture up and I'm going to invite you to, to sketch along with me. Obviously this isn't live, but um, I'd like to think that we're going to sketch at a similar pace. Now if I go too fast, then you can just pause me. Um, uh, or if you go too fast, then you can see what I do and slow down a bit. So I hope you get something from it. Uh, this will be a, a regular thing. I'm not quite sure even how to pitch it or introduce it, but uh, this is going to be the first. So let me know your thoughts and comments. Uh, like and subscribe. That helps the channel. And uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy this um, and listen to me chunter on for probably an hour talking absolute nonsense. This is um, my picture, one of my Boattober pictures that was sourced of Unsplash by uh bob brewer it's a beautiful image um basically the reason why i thought i'd do this one tonight is i looked at this and i can see a series of very obvious layers in terms of intensity so you have the background layer which effectively is the sky and ever so slightly darker than the lowest darkest level of the clouds of the turbines and then again, slightly darker, you have an average kind of level of the, the sort of sea, the mid-tones in the sea. And then as you get further forward, you have some darker elements and uh, horizontal lines for the waves. And then obviously the darkest of them all is this silhouette of the boat and then the gulls. But the highlights are the interesting thing because you have small highlights in the background and then coming forward, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. They are not irregular, they, they are in sort of vague lines. Um, so that's, that's, if you're painting with ink and watercolour, that's effectively negative space. And the easiest way to create negative space is to use a, you know, a barrier like a masking fluid or masking tape or whatever. Um, so that, it's going to be an interesting one, this, because it's, it's a way of working in ink that not a lot of people actually do. Um, and I'm not saying it's the solution, you could use watercolour, you could use whatever, but this is just working with ink. Now, this evening I'm going to be drawing with Diamine's Earl Grey, which is a fantastic chromatic ink, and it can split up into all sorts of different pinks and blues and, and all sorts. It's quite a fun ink to use. So what I've done to begin with is I've diluted these down into, I've got three egg cups, and I've got, um, you can probably see them there, I've got um, completely diluted, a mid diluted and then a neat there now how those look in reality i need to get a spare bit of paper yeah that'll do right so a sketch that went wrong there so we'll start with the most dilute one so there you can see that is pretty dilute and then the slightly more darker one i think i'm going to end up using this for most of it to be honest with you that isn't that much darker actually, but, and then the full dark one, there you go. So it's not black, it's, it is grey. Mm -hmm. I might add a little bit of more into that mid-tone one, but like I say, you can build it up in layers anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But Now you could, you could take a lot of time over this and do it completely accurately and end up with a sort of perfect drawing, but that's not really what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm actually, this isn't a commission. This is not paid work. This is me doing something just for the love of it. Um, and sometimes I like to work a little bit loose and keep things a bit stress-free. I don't want to be focusing too much on the details. So, a bit of masking tape. The ditch is always the hardest bit. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Let's make sure it's all the way in. Okay, so like that. And then the first thing I'm going to do is, now do I put masking tape around the side and create like a border around this? It might look nice. Cause some problems when it comes to unmasking it. No, I'm not going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this lovely clean water and I'm going to wet this, not being too precious. This is going to be a sort of slightly wet in wet technique because what I'm going to be doing is dropping some uh, clouds in. Uh, 
uh, and then I'm going over the top of that once that's dried to put in the wind turbines. Now they're not windmills because they do not mill, they turb, hence their turbines. So, uh, like I say, I'm working quite quick here, um, partly because, well, you can see this chromatic ink. I've already just dabbed it on a bit of tissue, and you see how it's separating there. You see that layer of blue around the outside? That's why it's a lot of fun to use. So I'm going to get my medium, and I'm going to actually look at this reference picture, see what the clouds are doing. Oh, you bugger. Right. So there's a layer of dark clouds on the top. A bit of splash. The dark clouds seem to run over the top and then it's lighter. It's probably, you probably don't want it to necessarily be light on the horizon because then you won't have much of a sort of differentiation between the highlights. So I'm going to roughly put in, uh, get out the gutter you, something like that. You can see how rough and ready I'm being here. I'm just spl splodging it in. Now I'm going to get some of the, I'm just going to dry that off a bit. I'm going to get some of the, the roaring and just mix it in at the top on this side. I don't want to go too far over because what I'm going to do is have the wind turbines over here. So, but I want to create a little bit more a little bit more texture, variation in tones. So we're gonna go something like that. And just take some of that out of the gutter so it doesn't seek through the whole pad, which it always does, it's very annoying. Um, and then I might just put a tiny bit more in. Again, I'm sort of dabbing, not being too precious. Right, so I think that's probably my, most of my sky. So one of the problems with this technique, I guess it's not a problem, but it, it's a bit annoying, is every time you do a new layer, what you're, you're doing is you're effectively, what you're wanting is maybe to let it dry a little bit. Um, that's a bit dark, I'm just gonna pull that out with a bit of, you, what, if you wanna pull any of this ink out, you can just dry your brush off and then go in and pull it out. And what you'll find is it leaves some pink. Uh, and then you can also add water to create sort of cauliflowers and interesting effects if you, if you want to. I can show you that by adding some here and maybe adding a bit there. There you go. Right. So yeah, it's gone a bit crazy. I love it. I'll give it a little hair dry. So that's how that's looking now. Now, I've, like I said earlier with this, if you really took your time, you can actually get almost sort of photorealistic results with this, but that's not what I'm wanting. If I wanted photorealism, I would take a photo. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in over the top of this, these wind turbines. So this is probably quite a hard bit really, because it's got to be reasonably accurate. Now you could be quite gestural with it, and I might be, I don't really know yet. I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to do it and see how it, it is. Um, I'm going to have my tissues on hand. I don't know really what the best brush to use for this. I guess this small mop brush would give me plenty of... Now if you look at the reference images, you can see that the turbines are sort of pointy blades. The uh, actual stems are quite regular with some little bases on. And there's a bit of perspective in them as they get a little bit further away. So what I've done is I've moved my turbines because I wanted them opposite the boat. Um, I think the composition was just a bit weird. Uh, and I just like splitting it up. I don't know whether it's any better or worse. It's just a personal thing. Uh, and I've tried to put a little bit of perspective in mine as they get further away. So um, they're, the mine are going to be look a bit uniform. They're not going to look the same, but that's the really nice thing is you can change these pictures and do it however you want. So here goes nothing. So I'm going to start at the top. 
and then come down now that's already I know that's not going to be um, it's not going to be dark enough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tiny syringe uh, and scoop up a bit more ink and I'm going to add it to that one it's a nice noise <laughs> just to richen the mixture up a bit because that isn't dark enough definitely isn't dark enough so let's mix that up again and see how that looks basically it's the same oh well so let's try again now what may have to happen with these is i may have to just go over them again um it's going to be worth just seeing And now with these, I am kind of just playing it a little bit by ear in terms of how I create these, even these wind turbines, you know, I'm going heavy and then lifting off and heavy and then lifting off. Light, heavy and off because it's not, again, you're not literally trying to show how they're made from an engineering perspective, you are just trying to capture the notion of them. I had a lovely day today with my, my girl, my daughter. We went to a local aircraft, airplane, aviation museum. And she's at that age where there's absolutely no notion of cool. That sort of cool nonchalance that comes with not expressing any passion or enthusiasm i think it's one of the, the sad things when you become a teenager you think that being cool and you know having a, an air of mystery comes from a place where you actually stop expressing you stop being silly and uh showing your passions and curiosity in such an obvious way and like she is just like a sponge at the moment everything everything gets sucked up and yeah we had a fantastic time doing some sketching together of some of the aircraft it was funny actually watching her because she was pretty excited about everything and just running around jumping in aircraft cockpits and looking at all the helicopters and loads to read and just soaking it all in and then we sat down to do some sketching and within 10 minutes she went really quiet and then when she finished a sketch she um she basically i'm trying to find a sketchbook here i shouldn't be stopping this but yeah this was something that i did but more importantly this is what she did uh, some great birds some great planes and wrote down some things that she'd found out about aircraft like Aircrafts have something called a rudder and a tiller. Um, yeah, it's great fun. But yeah, so she did this amazing sketches and she and then afterwards she just laid on the back in this big aircraft hangar and looking at all the aircraft on the ceiling and was just quiet and still. And it's it just really makes me it makes me happy that she can find some calm in the in the art, you know. Because it is a very relaxing thing to do. Basically, take this masking tape off, put another layer on top uh, to cover what's above. But I'm going to hair dry that first, so it's looking okay. A little trip, a trick with uh, masking tape is if you use a hair dryer to heat it up and uh, pull it off at an angle like this. It tends not to rip, but you still have to be quite careful. And if you're pulling too hard, particularly with something like cardi paper, it'll just tear it apart. She's very disappointing once you've spent ages doing a nice sketch. So that's our horizon. Um, I've just noticed that's still a bit wet in that one. And I managed to get a bit of contaminant in there as well. 
So I'm just going to use a hairdryer again quickly on that. There's a bit of damp splotch before I put masking tape over it because I don't want to be putting masking tape on damp uh, paper. So this is the fun bit coming up. I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work out, but because when you use stuff like um, masking fluid, it can be a little bit hit and miss. But the nice thing about working this quick and being as slovenly an artist as I am, is if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter. Uh, fortunately, there's no one here to beat me. Um, and one of the, th the things I really try and cultivate with all, all I do in terms of my art, certainly, uh, doesn't work in my professional life, but in my art, it's, I think being perfectionist is pretty toxic. Uh, and I think not only does it stop you creating in the first place, which let's face it, that's the reason why most people don't actually pick up a pencil. It's because they don't want to be bad at it. Um, I think it, it infiltrates into the whole process and actually can, can pretty much ruin a lot of it. So what I've done now is I've obviously masked off the top, so now I can go in with the masking fluid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna splash on some masking fluid to create some blobs. So the highlights are small on the horizon, and as you get forward, they get those sunlight blobs are getting bigger and bigger. There is a little bit of extra around the back of the boat and then the line going off that way, which on my picture, because my boat's over there, will go along a lot further. So what I'm gonna start off is by using a small brush um, and putting on lots of small dabs of masking fluid and then I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush and add some bigger dabs and then if I use a bigger brush I should be able to get some big blobs in the foreground but then what I ultimately might do is go in and add in by hand that bit and that bit and also create some horizontal lines because as you can see the highlights on these there is quite a lot of horizontal lines in there that'll be reinforced by when I put the ink on I'll be putting it on in horizontal stripes too so I need to find a brush now that I can use with masking fluid to splash it in. Stuff like this masking fluid, you just want to use a super cheap brush because if you use anything decent, it ruins the brush. Uh, but the problem is I'm running out of cheap brushes. Right, I've managed to find these. I'm not quite sure how they'll work, but you can give it a go. So again, I'm using this uh, SAA artist blue masking fluid blue is is actually brilliant because you can you can see it now in a situation like this i can do a bit of practicing on here and see well that's giving me quite fine and that's what i want to put down as a first base is some quite fine drops oops some slightly bigger ones so if you start on the bottom and work your way up and as it'll it'll start dropping big dollops but as it runs out it'll get finer and finer and finer so in this case you want to start at the bottom and then work your way up and again this is pretty Some people use a toothbrush and, sh sh and flick it on, which I think is a really good technique actually. Um, and I'm going to try and investigate that a bit more. But as I said, what I'm doing here is, is a bit of an experiment really. So I'll populate this a little bit more with these highlights. I can see there's a few bits where it doesn't have as many as others. Right. So we've got, what we've got is on, in the far horizon, we're going to have some I'm going to use this brush, which is an, a tiny, pointlessly small, uh, fine red sable 000 brush. As you can see, it's, it's I don't know, it's the kind of thing you'd apply a moustache on a Airfix General's 
top lip. As a child of the 70s, if ever. Anyway, so I'm going to use this really thin one. And I'm going to just put on some very thin highlights. Thin lines in the background. The problem with these really thin brushes is they hold absolutely no product on them at all. So, oh God. That one's gone a bit mad anyway, so. Um. Now, around the boat, we've got this bit at the back. And coming off, we've got the wake, which sort of runs a bit that way and a bit that way and I'm going to just do something like that fade that out so again in the background here I'm just going to do a few this isn't working out I'll tell you already a few horizontal lines So again, I'm not trying to capture 100% what's there. I'm doing a almost a, an impression or a sort of, I suppose it's, it's an ink sketch in a way. Right. So before that dries, completely I'm going to rinse it off the brush otherwise that brush is definitely for the bin and then I've got this which I use to spatter it on and I'm gonna now use that in the mid ground stroke foreground and I'm just gonna try and create some more sort of wave like I'm gonna try just dropping it on like a bit like that So what I'm doing is I'm just, again, sort of painting on those highlights, but it's a little bit difficult to see how it ultimately will look. So it's a bit of a wing and a prayer. Now it doesn't matter about this boat because that's going to go in with heavy ink afterwards. So that you can absolutely just leave that however you want. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, what I might do is go in on the foreground, actually. I did notice that some of those blobs in the very foreground were quite dark. I mean, were quite big blobs. So I thought what I might do, let's clean that a bit, is use the back of the brush here and just put in a few large large dots. Mm, there we go. I like Sometimes going a bit big. It's nice to go big. Big or go home. So, hair dryer. Put in the sea in two layers, and then it's the boat, and then we're done. It's actually quite a quick process when you're fairly rattling on with it. So, give me a sec, I'll get that dry. So what I'm gonna do now is put in a a single layer of ink over that. Now I'm not really 100% sure what brush to use for these. Okay, so I'm gonna put on a base layer here, just using this one here, which again is the mid one. I don't have to be too precious about this, do I? Because it's all masked off anyway. So obviously the masking fluid is a latex 
solution and anything that's liquid just doesn't stick to it so it's a resistive material like putting wax or whatever on it's the same idea i'm just going to drag those off just a hint more at sea right so that's layer one of the sea done um, so again with the hair dryer Right, I can see already here that some of these lines are probably a bit big. Um, but I'm not going to get hung up on that. I'm going to start putting in layer two. So for this, I've got a flat brush, a small flat brush. And I'm going to start at the back, small, small lines. And then as we get further forward, I'll probably turn the brush around or press harder to get some uh, bigger lines. So I'm trying to sort of use perspective to show, actually I'll start at the front for a change. Oops, help if there was some on there. I might go in and do another layer actually with these. these are waves in the foreground if you look at them there is a sort of irregularness but add a bit just dropping a little bit more ink in just to darken these up a bit and then as we get further back, they do get somewhat smaller. About somewhere here anyway, and then at the back they are really small. I mean, actually, in a way they don't get lighter, but you can almost sort of force perspective by having stuff in the background being a bit softer. Okay. So small, trying to hint at lines. And I'm going to put a line, one strong line under this wake. Add a bit of extra on there. Some straight lines. I might extend them out a little bit to here. Right, there we go. So again, I'm going to hair dry that and see where it looks. We might be there with the C. I might put another layer on, we'll see. <laughs> so as I said, I've... Um, use the hairdryer on this so this should be pretty ready to pull off now so when I take that off there we go so we've got the sky and the sea and now I need a tissue here I'm going to use a soft clean tissue and we're going to wipe off this masking fluid and hopefully not damage anything because it's almost the scariest bit of any any drawing when you're using masking fluid so I've only used two layers on the sea and I could have put another layer on but I'm choosing just to keep it not too contrasty so a tissue take off that latex and you can see now all the lovely highlights popping it's starting to look a little bit of like a rougher sea isn't it actually weirdly one of the things you notice when you use masking fluid is it always takes off a lot of the pencil so you have to your pencil application has to be a lot firmer now you can see here I've lost a bit of the boat so I could pencil it back in or I could just go go for it and draw it in I'll probably just draw it in because again I'm not that bothered about it being accurate 
quite just enjoying the process of this tonight. I do like art where you just start at one corner and see where you end up and really just play about and be silly. But sometimes there is something very appealing about quite process driven art where you know you can start at stage one and go to stage five and have something something you like at the end. So I hope that looks good on the camera. You can see that, yeah, it's pretty strong. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, because all I have to do now is, is put the final layer on with the pure ink and that's gonna be the boat and then the gulls. Um, so I'm gonna remove all this have a bit of a tidy up and put the camera on pause. Hopefully not forget to take it off pause, which is what I normally do. So what I'm gonna do for this next part is, because I'm not 100% sure where the boat is, and what's happened is the masking fluid has removed a little bit of those pencil lines, is I'm gonna go back in and just sketch in some of the bits that I don't wanna lose. Uh, there's no pulpit on this boat, so this bit on the front isn't even here. I'm losing my mind. So I'll leave that off. Uh, so we have a window. No, we don't. It's not like that. It's actually at that angle. Um, a lot of windows in that uh, thing. Right, so that's all fine. I know where all that goes. And the wheelhouse comes down here. And then there's that dude there doing whatever he's doing. Uh, and then the boat comes back various bits and bobs here. And then that's the back of the boat there. And this bit comes down to there, and then we're gonna go across to there. Something like that. And then there's that extension that runs along the top, and then some vertical lines and a thing in the middle. Right, so I know what I'm doing. So I've just used pencil to vaguely sketch the boat back in a little bit because it, it had disappeared. And then, what I'm going to use is this dip pen to basically draw the details back in and then I might fill it in with a brush or I might not. So one of the things that's quite nice about this technique is what you have is quite rough sort of organic ink shapes. And then that's combined with this quite um, rigid and sort of detailed details on top of it. And it's nice, that contrast. So there's, let's put one more. There's actually a little head in that uh, wheelhouse. So I'll maybe just try and show, show that somehow. Right, so this comes down and then we're down there like that and then I think these dip pens, they don't have a huge amount of capacity. This one as well. I need a deeper well for it is what I need. So what I'm doing with this one is almost just sketching in some details and I'll probably use just use a brush because frankly it's going to be quicker. Um, we've got lots of fun things on this mast. These little details like nav lights and aerials and little GPS bumps. They really do help to tell the story always and never underestimate how those little irregular features do really help. So here we have this rather odd 
canopy. And I think of that is a There's another weird little radar thing on the back of there. That's unusual. And oh, this is stupid. And there's this geezer here who's he looks like he's doing something. It's difficult to tell. He's definitely working on something. Right, yeah, that'll do. Just noticed. Um, so I'm just going to put in a few more lines. There is a, some form of, uh, pot winch or something here. And normally some kind of like kidney shaped device. It was nice doing the sketching actually today at the aircraft museum with my daughter because it's definitely one of those situations where I look back at those sketches and just remember what a perfect, perfect day that was. Um, it's funny how sometimes you don't know you've had one of those halcyon days that you remember hopefully for the, the rest of your days and other times you kind of know it when you're in it because you, you look around and it's this big beaming face and the wonder and excitement. And it's also something I'm really interested in as well. So I can genuinely impart a little bit of knowledge, certainly impart a lot of enthusiasm for engineering and the science. And actually, weirdly, I thought about this today, you know, the romance of, of aircraft. You know, it's weird seeing these dinosaurs, well, not dinosaurs, but old aircraft, you know, static and quiet with dust on them, when aircraft like boats are a very, they're a very sort of visceral, noisy, smelly, um, animated thing. And it's, there's a sort of weird sense of a mausoleum about these places. Uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird anyway. So that's my boat. And then I've got these birds. Now I'm not 100% sure whether this dip pen is the right thing for the birds, but I do know Let's give it a go. You can use it and create, oh, it's rail rolling like a, and create some quite nice shapes. I might just have to do them by hand. That one looks like it's flying upside down, which is always fun. I quite like slightly abstract ones. I think often birds can look super naff and twee, uh, and it's not something that I, I do all the time, but sometimes it's good to sort of give some sense of context. And also an image like this, it's so iconic seeing them following a, a fishing boat home. So in terms of the shape of these, I have literally looked at the picture and seen what shapes they're making, but not massively accurately, more sort of just vaguely and roughly. And some are further away, so some are going to be smaller. Uh, and some are more accurately drawn than others. You need, with these dip pens, you actually, I 
see, I, this is pointless. I should be dipping it straight into the ink. Um, I'm not going to open that. Oh, that's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? Opening the actual ink bottle. And we're getting there. Okay, so... Uh, what else can I chat about? Okay, I've been... Some of you might know that I've recently had a big art sale on. Um, I like my art to pay for a little bit of my life. It's not my main income, it's I have a job. And it really is a hobby as much as anything, but if it could pay for a few, you know, treats, a little bit of a holiday or something, it's an absolute thrill. It's not an expensive hobby. So anyway, we had a recent disaster with the car uh, and it just cost a thousand pound to fix. So I put a little art sale on them. I've had a wonderful response from people. Uh, a lot of it from my friends actually, people who have just responded, which is so kind. Um, my other fear is one day I'll just get buried under my own sketches and be found suffocated by a super elephant sized piece of paper or something like that. I like the stuff that I keep, the stuff that I keep, and there's some stuff that I'll probably end up putting up on my own wall. Um, right, I feel like that took ages. So the last bit is filling this boat in, so I'm gonna use one of these gorgeous rigger brushes and hopefully not mess this up at the last minute. This is a really fun bit of the drawing because it really feels like it just comes together at this point and you feel a little bit smug because you haven't screwed up yet. There's always time. So the fact that there's some light spots behind this doesn't really matter because the ink is dark enough to, to cover the differences between those. But if you do have some showing through you can always go back in and do another layer on the boat. Now you don't know whether you can see here, but I'm resting my finger on the edge of the page. And that means I get a really nice neat line. The old sign writer's trick. So another way to stop those whites showing through is just when you actually apply the ink, is actually put it on quite thickly. This really brush is split into two, which is a bit annoying. It's like a snake's tongue brush. I need, if anyone's got any tips on how to straighten brushes, particularly riggers, I've tried putting a bit of soap on them and leaving them uh, to reset, but for some reason, one of them it seems to work, for others it doesn't. So if anybody's got any ideas of how to reform these into usable single elements, I'd be very grateful. Please leave something in the comments. So anyway, yeah, I've been sending my art all around the world to uh, Germany, uh, America. Thank you, Gretchen, if you're watching. Uh, what I occasionally do which sounds really weird. You probably think I'm really odd, but I like to know where it's going. I'm so curious about, well, everything really. I'm quite a curious person. Uh, it's sometimes if it's going somewhere where I'm like, where's that in the world? I will Google it. Uh, and I'll go, oh, it's going in that house. How cool, my picture is gonna be hung up in that house. And I have no idea what people, obviously what it's like inside people's houses, but it's just curious to think a little bit of something that I've sat and created at this dining table is going to be in someone's home, which is just very cool. So it's always nice to, when you get a, a, a random address somewhere in, you know, Switzerland, and you think, oh, I wonder what that house is like. It's quite mad. That makes me maybe sound super weird, but I don't know. It's just, I get curious. Right, I'm kind of almost done with this now. 
when I posted this challenge, it's part of the Boattober challenges for 2023. The first thing I thought when I saw it was this process. I thought, this is how you do that. Um, because I've done it before. But what's been really fun is watching the way that everybody else is doing it. And of course, everyone's doing it so differently. Um, there isn't a single way of doing it, of course. There's lots of ways. So I don't know whether I need to put on any kind of sort of reflection here. Maybe just a little. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. It isn't on the picture, but anyway. hint of a wake going off this way. Right, that's it. So, I don't know what you think about that. Um, um, oh, of course, I've always forgotten to do the, uh, I've forgotten to do the little guys on the boat. So yeah, that's kind of it. I, I, I'm not 100% sure what you'll think about this technique or, uh, you know, it's, it's basically like watercolours, but you're taking out quite a lot of the decisions about what colour goes where. Um, I personally find it quite simplifying, but some people probably would, would be a bit afraid to try something in ink. So the dilute, the concentrated ink can go back in a bowl, because that's what it is. The rest of it is lobbed away. And I'm going to give you some juicy close-ups of this once I've dried it off. So, hair dryer again. And then it's time to tidy up. So, yeah, you can see there is a little bit of fluff detail in there, but that doesn't matter. We've got these birds heading up here. This ink with this wonderful chromatic effect here where the edges are blue and there's pink and it's a bit splashy. And then as we go across, obviously everything's sat in the gutter, which it always does when you're doing this kind of work in a sketchbook. Um, and then these slightly defor um, diffuse, very badly <laughs> sketch and has been blobbed out here turbines doesn't matter don't mind about that you can see actually it going back here where i added in that clean water and it created a bit of a um a sort of bloom so you can see here where i did that clean water in and it created a bit of a cloud and then the highlights on the water i think have actually worked out pretty well um i think probably too many highlights these actually look like waves and that wasn't really what I was trying to do. I was trying to do it with dots for highlights, but it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'll take some stills. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and it's a different approach. But I think it worked quite well. So I hope you enjoyed that and you got some dip from it. It's interesting working with ink. Um, you never know quite what you're gonna get, but uh, that's the fun of it. And um, yeah, and pop back in a week or so and there'll be another sketching, sketch along type thing. I will think of a name. Um, okay, thanks. Good night.